Thank you so much for joining us. March is National Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, and we're here to talk about colorectal cancer screening. My name is Jenna Schiffelbein, and I oversee community education at the Norris Cotton Cancer Center, and I'm joined by Dr. Lynn Butterly. She's a gastroenterologist, director of Dartmouth-Hitchcock's colorectal cancer screening program, and she's also a member and researcher at the Norris Cotton Cancer Center. So Lynn, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you for doing this. So with March being Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, can you tell us what's so important about this disease? Yes, certainly. So there are a few things, actually. So colorectal cancer is one of the few cancers that we can actually prevent. So in other words, we can prevent people from ever getting it at all. So that's very important, and we know how to do that. We do that through screening. Um, uh, in addition, it is the second most common cause of death from cancer in this country. Mm. So it's certainly important that we prevent more people from dying of colorectal cancer since it is the second most common cause of death. Um, and um, we, are, uh, there, we make the distinction when we do screening between prevention and early detection. Hmm. Um, so that's one of the things that's important to understand. So prevention means that we prevent an individual from ever developing colorectal cancer at all. Early detection means that we find it early um, so that treatment is more effective, survival is better. Um, for all those reasons, if you have to get cancer, it's much better if it is detected early. Mm -hmm. The reason that we have the opportunity for actual prevention of colorectal cancer is because almost all colorectal cancer starts off as a little growth on the lining of the inside of the colon called a polyp. Mm -hmm. And over 10 to 15 years or so, some of the polyps develop into colon cancer. That means if we do, for example, a colonoscopy during that time, look inside the colon, find the polyp, and remove it, then we've eliminated any chance of it ever turning into cancer. Hmm. So that's why for colorectal cancer, unlike for some other cancers, we can actually prevent it from ever happening rather than just catching it early. So second most common cause of death from cancer in the country, a disease that we know we can prevent and we know how. So for all those reasons, uh, President Clinton in 2000 designated March as Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month hmm. so that more people would go see their providers, get screened, and we would be able to wipe out colorectal cancer. Wow, thank you for that information. So you were talking about polyps and you were also talking about colorectal cancer. Can you tell us a little bit about the difference in risk and whether people have different risk levels for each of those? Sure, great question. Um, everyone is not at the same level of risk for colorectal cancer. Mm. Um, the two common categories that we might think about other than the people who are at very high risk due to hereditary diseases which we're not going to be talking about today. Um, but those two ca everyday categories would be average risk individuals, and that means people who have no symptoms, who are age 50, uh, and they have no personal history of colorectal cancer or potentially precancerous polyps. Hmm. Then there are people who are at increased risk, um, and they are at increased risk, in other words, they have a greater chance of developing polyps or colorectal cancer. And that is because they either have family history, particularly in a close relative, or they have had a personal history of polyps mm. or colorectal cancer. So people who've had potentially precancerous polyps or colorectal cancer are known to be at greater risk. And so we do their tests more often um, and in fact, people who are at increased risk are almost always screened, it's actually called surveillance if you're at increased risk, using colonoscopy. For people who are at average risk, we have a choice of options, all of which are known to be effective in order to try to prevent them from developing polyps or letting those polyps turn into colon cancer. Mm. So if you're at average risk, you don't have significant family history and you haven't had a personal history of polyps or mm -hmm. precancerous polyps uh, of, or colorectal cancer. 
Um, at average risk, we start screening at 50, and you have a choice between uh, four commonly used tests, two of which are, are used very frequently. Hmm. Um, there are stool-based tests, um, which would include the cards, the stool cards, or the stool kit, the fit kit. Um, it, both of those are stool-based tests. We look for hidden blood in the stool. Hmm. That suggests that maybe we need to get a colonoscopy and make sure there's no growth in the colon. Um, and uh, then there is a colonoscopy and sigmoidoscopy, which is sort of a shorter version of colonoscopy, and then what we call virtual colonoscopy, hmm. which is CTC, which is another way of visualizing the inside of the colon. So if you're at average risk, then you would talk to your provider and decide which test is right for you. Okay. If you're at increased risk, then the test of choice would be colonoscopy because we know you have a greater chance hmm. of having colorectal polyps um, or be more likely to have polyps that could turn into cancer. Okay, wow. So it sounds like there's definitely a connection between risk and what screening options are appropriate and that folks should talk to their doctor. Exactly. Okay, or their Perfect. clinician. They're right. Perfect. Perfect. So when you do go and get screened, how mm -hmm. often are people, you know, being found positive for a polyp or colorectal cancer? Mm -hmm. Another great question. I think one of the things that's important for people to realize when they're thinking about going for screening is that when we do colonoscopies for people who are at average risk, mm -hmm. we almost never find a colorectal cancer. It's 0.1 to 0.2 percent of the time, which means you do thousands of cases and find maybe a handful who already have colon cancer. It is extremely unlikely to be the case. Not impossible, but it's rare. Mm -hmm. However, we are fairly likely to find polyps because they occur in many people, 40 to 50 percent of people uh, at least probably have polyps, some of which have the opportunity to p potentially develop into colorectal cancer. So the name of the game is do the colonoscopy, find the polyps, remove them, and that which is painlessly done, it's mm. totally painless, there's no feeling for removing polyps, um, and then the person never gets the colon cancer. So I think that's a great question because I think it's very reassuring for people to realize that when they go for screening, if they are at average risk, it's very unlikely that they're going to have anything. They may have nothing, they may have a polyp, but very unlikely that they would have a colorectal cancer found on that exam. Okay. So we've talked a lot about screening tests. Are there other things that people can do to prevent colorectal cancer? Right. Great. Um, Absolutely. So, as with every other form of cancer, it's important to lead a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So, important things are not smoking, because smoking is clearly a risk factor for colorectal cancer. Um, maintaining a healthy weight, avoiding obesity, getting exercise, all of the things that keep us healthy in mm -hmm. our general lives are important in terms of preventing colorectal cancer. However, all that aside, certainly important to do, but it's not sufficient. Mm -hmm. So in addition to that, it is very important for people to talk about screening, colorectal cancer screening, with their provider, because as we said, going for screening um, gives us the opportunity to actually prevent people from getting colorectal cancer. Mm. And that is critically important in terms of saving lives and preventing people from getting a disease they potentially don't have to get. Oh, perfect. Well, any parting thoughts? Any other questions that you wanted to discuss today? Um, I don't think there's anything else that I need to say. Did you have? No, I think that really sums it up. So colorectal cancer Awareness Month really has um, great importance in March, and we really encourage everyone to go talk with their clinician about screening. Absolutely. It's mm -hmm. one of the few cancers we can prevent. See your provider. Uh, getting screened could easily save your life. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time today. You're very welcome. And if you're watching this at home, feel free to leave a comment or a question below, and we will get those to Dr. Butterly and others at Dartmouth-Hitchcock to um, respond to your questions and comments. Right. Thank you so much.